So before we get into this video, I just want to say a big massive thank you to all of my subscribers, all of the new ones, and also all of the ones that's been supporting me from day. Without you guys, there will be no me. I love you all, and I thank you for all of your support and all your comments that you've been sharing on my channel. I want to say thank you, and I hope that all this content that I've been putting out has been helpful to most of you, or if not all of you, because I try to basically give you the best information I can because there's a lot of channels out there that literally like the videos they don't give you all the information that you need and you have to pay to get it whereas I give it to you for free so I want to say thank you all for support me stay blessed keep on rolling boom hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Gab Official today I'm going to show you how to replace a thermostat on this Lexus IS250 so as you can see here this is the thermostat I'm replacing today it's literally right here so it's got three 10 mil bolts one there one on there and there's one underneath there so what i need to do is remove this pipe that pipe this cover i take this cover off as well move this little air intake scoop off so literally just push these tabs in all of them and then you'll be able to pop it up so i'm going to go ahead and do that now so once you've pushed all the tabs in you can literally just pull them up like so and now once they're out you literally just pull that whole thing off as you can see now all we need to do is just take this scoop off so i'll have a bit more space there to work with so it's a 10 mil there just on clips from here and just detach it from down there so now I'll just unbolt this on see it literally just comes out like that you pull it pops off now we've got a bit more space there as you can see if you need a bit more space you can also take off this overflow bottle i should need to do that so now i'm going to need to take this cover, the plastic out of cover off as you can see some 10 mil bits you just turn them and pull them off so i'm going to go ahead and do that now actually the 13s actually you can just literally look, just turn them. As you can see, they literally just screw off. Now, what we're going to do to get to the rest of them is literally just take the size count off. Just make sure you put a little pan underneath for the excess coolant that will drain off. And you literally moving and pulling at the same time gonna need to take this one off as well we'll go ahead and do that Now I can just pull it off, there will be coolant coming out of this. So now, just screw this one off. It's hard to get to if you don't take this pipe off. This one here. Then what we want to do is take this 10 mil off. And that one there as well just to move this wiring on this up a little bit so as you can see this sits a little bit underneath it so we need to clear that bit there there's also one in the corner as well so there's three of them so there's one two three so now literally you can see what i'm talking about see we've got the clearance underneath there now so this cover should be able to come straight off and just on clip this one here as well so once that's off, you see you just got to push these two little bits in and pull it off. This cover should come straight off. Like so, let's pull it out. Now, you 
see we've got more space around there. And we're going to take this pipe off as well. For the bolt underneath there, because if you haven't got a 13 mil, a 10 mil, mean 10 mil spanner, it's going to be difficult to get that. And I haven't got one of those on me at the moment, so I'm going to be using a ratchet and a spanner. So I'm going to take this pipe off. So I'm just going to take that off. So literally this pipe's not budging to come off at the moment, so you can get to it with like a 3.8 or a 10 mil spanner, ratchet spanner would be better, but this pipe literally if you move it up like so, you'll be able to gain enough access to get that bolt, that bolt right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that instead. So as you can see there, I have got a short socket on that one. As you can see, it's on there to remove it. Just a little ratchet. As you can see, that one's off right there. Now I've got to get that one. And that one there. Just take this. You can take this pipe off if you want, just to make it easier. If you can't get to it, but if you can, I'll look to that. I should be able to be get in there without squashing that pipe. I'm going to get that one off, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And just crack them in there. Just push this pipe to the side like that. This one screwed that one. Now that's off, we literally just pull it out gently. So literally, you do need to take this pipe off because it'll be a bit of a struggle to get this off. So, as you can see, it catches on that rubber pipe there. So, let's pull this off to make your job a lot easier. just come out like that well not exactly like that but yeah you can see that's off now you just found that would literally sticking sometimes it sticks closed sometimes it sticks open and just remember as you can see there's no gasket on that bit there if you look up here the gasket's stuck take it off you can see that's what it looks like up inside there You can see it's just studs that you literally just push the first step back onto and just some 10 mil nuts. So as you can see today, we fit in the Mishimoto one. This one's an upgrade from the original thermostat. This one should give me better cooling as well. And this one's supposed to open earlier as well. I'm gonna go ahead and fit that. So I'm literally gonna take this pipe out of the way just to make my job a lot easier. It's probably best to take all the pipes off. So now that pipe's out of the way, see this one here? Then you need to push it away from it and then just line that up like so and put it in. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So once you push that pipe out of the way, see it just sits flush. And I'm going to tighten that up. So now I've catch all the bolts, I'm just literally gonna go ahead and tighten them all up. I literally put them on by hand first. This part to go back up there after, so this gives you a bit more space to do what you need to do. So 
So if you've got a long extension. Should be able to get to that bolt. As you can see, that's it down there. You be able to tighten it. Because these are 10 mil. Now, once that's all tightened now, just gonna go ahead and fit all the pipes back on. So, put that one back on. Then we're going to do is basically put the clamps back on, then obviously put that cover that's supposed to sit there back on. Now, as you can see, those pipes are on, clips are on, so it's that one. Have this cover here. Once that's done, this one here literally just clips back in like that. Then I'll wiring loom, just put it back on like so. Then just put the three nuts back in, 10 mil nuts. It's on. And put that clamp on. So now that's back on, including the pipes. And the diggers. Bottom, so you just slot something around like that, push it right in, you know what I mean? Line it up with there, clips into that little hole there. Now I'm going to put up with water and coolant. So literally, if you've got a bleeder system, I'd recommend you use that. Realistically, I'm going to bleed it a different way. So I'm just going to fill it up with some coolant. Just going to miss the hole, you know what I mean? There's loads of air in it, you can see it. Now I'm going to start the engine, you're going to see the air bubbles coming out of there. That's the way of leading the system, just leaving it run for a bit with the cap off. So thanks for watching my channel. If you found this content helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe button. Stay blessed, keep on rolling. Boom.